Welcome to another exciting episode of Kazu Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev. My name is Mirigi. And today we are at Subaru, Kenya, the home of the Mitsuraboshi, the lucky star from Japan, courtesy of Fuji Heavy Industries. But first things first, let's check out the news. On to our first news item, we're talking about Carlos Ghosn, the legendary ex-Nissan Renault chairman who escaped dramatically from the hideout in Japan. And this is like a movie story, Mr. Mirigi. What do you think? How the hell did he just escape the Japanese authorities and end up in Lebanon? Some of these things, as in it plays like a movie, I was never expecting this to happen to him. Even the arrest and everything, everything about the way that whole entire case went was very very controversial. I think uh, the Chinese, the Japanese, sorry, were, ha were operating with a very heavy hand. So, but I'm very surprised that they reacted like that. You don't expect this to happen to somebody who is in charge of, I understand what is the largest conglomerate of cars right now. Imagine that. Yeah. Now imagine Nissan, Renault, the alliance is so big. They even had a hand in buying Mitsubishi and many other uh, smaller companies to bring yeah. up this big Renault, Nissan uh, conglomerate. Again, this has led Nissan to have 70% drop in profit simply because of the bickering within the, within the whole organization. And I understand the fact that is Nissan doesn't want to integrate further with Renault. So you, you do understand that there are some people within the board who had a hand, like you mentioned, with the Japanese government to prevent that from happening. And they had to do something about Carlos. I don't know what's going to happen. It's interesting to see now that he has escaped. He's now an international fugitive. Who would have ever thought that Carlos Ghosn would become a fugitive with his great mind, he's one who engineered the whole success. 20 years of Nissan Renault success, sharing platform, CMF platform, from Renault to Nissan to the Dasta Dacia yeah. and many other brands that are coming in together within the Renault Nissan. So we're going to tell you much more as we find out and how the situation pans out, courtesy of Kazu Big Boy Trap. <laughs> on to our second news item, we're talking about the Dakar Rally 2020, the toughest off-roading event in the world it's happening right now in saudi arabia and i can tell you big brands like toyota ford nissan bmw mini even iveco are actually trying to compete and see who is the best brand as far as durability is concerned mr murigi we've seen former uh, world champion alonso drive the toyota what do you think about the dakar moving into saudi arabia well i'm happy that it's moving closer to africa yes. <laughs> that's the one thing i have to say um we should think about whether we can do this in kenya because we can actually provide all of those environments in one solid place. Yes. Hopefully now that we're getting the WRC coming, we can see about how we are going to do that. I understand we might have been in the running when it, lived, uh, when it left uh, Dakar. Yes. Uh, one or two things didn't go according to plan. So hopefully it's getting closer and closer to actual Dakar, yes. <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> and you can imagine for a fact that now that WRC is coming to Kenya this year, if this candidate event becomes successful, I can guarantee you for a fact that Dakar is going to move here in the next five years. Guaranteed. And you've seen the likes of Toyota Hilux moving on with their brand new Hilux. You have the, the Devia brothers who are now pushing and I think number one or number two. And then Alonso yesterday, as of yesterday, was 10th or 11th. So it's a really tough rally. Hard end. This Paris Dakar actually gives uh, car brands the opportunity to push their brands. Durability. You know Toyota is known for reliability and durability. And of course the likes of Ford who can't just sit back and see the range and not being part of it. And of course BMW Mini doing amazingly well. You can only think of the Mini as just as a city vehicle. But now you can see the 4x4 countryman or clubman doing amazing things at the Dakar rally. So we can't wait to see the final results and we'll keep you posted next week. <laughs> On to the next item, and we've just had rumors among many F1 followers that Lewis Hamilton is considering leaving Mercedes-Benz and heading towards the Scuderia. Now, that is very controversial, Mr. Birigi. I, being personally a Lewis Hamilton fan, think that would be a career-ending move. What do you think? Well, change is an interesting thing. You never know. Uh, maybe now this will get him a better deal at Mercedes. We, we genuinely don't know. I'm just genuinely waiting to see how this is going to play out. No, well, I can tell you for a fact that Mercedes are the top of their game. Over the six years that these new rules have favored them, they have really come out every year, coming out, pushing the bar as far as development of the vehicle is concerned. They had a big scare last year yeah. where Ferrari now finally found the downforce to make the car really quick. The issue is now they're trying to sort out the last part of this era, 2020. Will we see Ferrari coming out and having a world champion in Leclerc? We don't know. but. For Lewis Hamilton, I think he's just trying to bargain. Just like any other Kenyan likes bargaining. So Mercedes have not given him a reason to leave. However, the lure of the red prancing horse 
you can't avoid it as a Formula One driver. It's a dream for everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a legacy that you really can't run away from. And Lewis having six world championships, just waiting for one more to equal Michael Schumacher being the all-time greatest. I think he's really considering that. But I have a 25% chance he's going to move, but 75, he'll remain at Mercedes because they have not given him a reason to move. And of course, he's built the team from scratch, therefore giving that ability to leverage a lot from the board. And we're also coming to you now with news that has just come out straight out of Las Vegas at CES. Sony is coming up with a new car, Trevor. Guys, remember the man with the best, the guys who make the deadly audio systems, the best TV uh, screens, they have now a brand new electric car. It looks sort of like a Tesla, a Lucid, um, the NIX, it's different sort of cars, but what we've understood is that Sony is trying to showcase the whole digital aspect of them being as a brand. So for example, Lane Departure Assist, they're using their CMOS sensor that you find on your phone and cameras to give you stereoscopic view of the road and of course give you the different advantages of autonomous emergency braking and etc. Again, the batteries, again, built by Sony themselves, they, you know they make uh, you know, DVDs and they make also batteries for uh, the cameras. They have also begun to build that sort of energy and bring it into the car. Another interesting thing that I've seen with this particular car, do you think, Mr. Murigi, that Sony will survive the onslaught now that Tesla has already, you know, cemented its lead in as far as electric vehicles well, concerned? Well, I mean, you know, electric cars now are not a niche anymore. Yes. They're the main thing. They're easier to build than our internal combustion engine. Yes. In fact, what I've started to see a lot in the Chinese market is basically all you're doing is building the shell, then you get batteries and an electric motor. Yes. So we're going to see very many more players coming in. Uh -huh. Sony has the advantage of having some brand name recognition, which yes. is a good thing, and it has a very very strong background technology and technology is the main thing that you need when you have an electric car. Imagine in terms of sound. You know I love sound yeah. and the moti. Yes. Now they've put that Sony man with the bass inside the electric car. <laughs> Virtuals around 7.1 so you can imagine the crystal clarity of the speakers within the car. And of course you do have quite a number of things. DVD playing, the audio system, you also have quite a number of things in as far as safety is concerned. If you don't know, Sony have also been very keen on putting Wi-Fi in, in airplanes. Panasonic and, and Sony have actually partnered and are offering Wi-Fi in planes. So now they're trying to put that 5G technology within this particular setup. And of course, that gives an amazing advantage to consumers, especially the young ones who can't stay away from Wi-Fi. To our social media section where we tell you always to hit us up on our social media handles you're reading some of the comments you've sent us on twitter and facebook and you're going to start right away with a guy called fitness enthusiast at nel underscore soo your love for cars that's awesome keep up the good work cbb tv thank you very much we appreciate the kind guest here we'll continue on endeavoring to give you all the latest news reviews from across the world and of course give you all the details as far as the Kenyan market is concerned. So stay tuned and give you much more feedback. Now on to our next one, Mr. Muriga, I think you need to answer this. Um, this is from our Facebook post. There's a guy called Simon, Simon Panther. Uh, between a Formula One car and a Bugatti, which is a faster car? Mr. Murigi. <laughs> faster means a lot of things. Could be acceleration or it could be the highest top speed. I think the acceleration, the F1 car is going to take it. But in terms of top speed, might actually go to the Bugatti. Wow, guys. So that's it from our social media handle. We have one more. The guy said, guys, please review the Subaru Forester or Outback. Well, Mr. Murigi, you have to for him right now. Stay tuned for more. Coming up on Cars with Big Boy Trap. a very exciting day i personally i am a subaru fan i grew up in a subaru family my dad had a leon had the bf legacy the bg the bh and now has a bp and i can tell you for a fact that i have learned the subaru dna from when i was very young so i'm very excited today because i'm in the cabin of the outback the latest outback and i can tell you for a fact the level of premiumness in this car is unbelievable gone are the days in the 90s when subaru are only known for producing fast Cars, the STI and the, and the Forester Turbos, now they have a new, older, mature audience that need premium vehicles that compete, can compete with the likes of the Audi A6, you know, the BMW 5 Series, and of course the Mercedes E-Class wagon. And this particular car has it all. 
kama kawaida we start with the center console as you can see here so but i've gone for the butch look you know you have edges on the dashboard and it's lined with leather stitched leather as you can see here and there's a panel of wood and of course a stainless steel trim that gives this car that premiumness that you deserve so guys as you can see the center console here has a piano black finish with silver trimming around it to give it a premiumness as i mentioned earlier and you can see here there's a multi-touch information display that houses climate control which is very standard and, and of course an audio system and not forgetting it has the capacity to do android auto and apple carplay system so you can plug in your phone and use the system around it to make sure that you have a good navigation journey while driving the outback the music on this particular car is courtesy of Harman Kardon dope quality premium sound 825 watts and it sounds like this <laughs> listen to that sound <laughs> listen to that sound that is quality sound courtesy of Harman Kardon and you can see how Subaru have gone the extra length to ensure that this particular outback meets the premium expectations of the premium customer speaking of that you have dual zone climatic condition you can actually control the different temperatures from different sides if i want cold weather and you want hot weather we can all use this particular system to power up our system and enjoy the long journey courtesy of the outback of course over here you do have the gear shift console it's a tiptronic functionality where you have park reverse neutral and manual mode and it's a cvt guys you know me and cvt's are not good friends but it's been tuned for efficiency and that's something that you need to understand you have plenty of cables and space as you can see here you have your mobile uh, you can store a mobile phone here it has actually wireless charging if your phone has that capacity and of course you have uh, you know electronic park brake hill descent control and x mode x mode is basically all-wheel drive mode so it allows traction to be di distributed on all four wheels without slipping and that is the beauty of symmetrical all-wheel drive obviously on the instrument binnacle here which is very important it is it has a light blue hue so it, it doesn't overpower the eyes of the driver so it has very clear italics so you can see what is happening on the left hand side you have a tachometer and of course on the right hand side the speedometer and in between you do have um, a multi-information display that gives you uh, the level of fuel um, and also critical aspects of the vehicle so for example if your door is open um, if you have any sensor issues in the vehicle it will tell you this particular car has everything steering comfortable as you can see um, you do have satellite buttons here on the left it's volume and speech recognition and on the right you do have cruise control which is adaptive and of course it has the eyesight which is a stereoscopic camera to ensure that you don't hit the car in front of you we need to find out if this seats are comfortable i personally am comfortable these seats are hugging and the leather they are perforated with heat and cooling and obviously you have uh, some settings here for position so if you have two drivers you can actually set your position and then once you shift you just press one or two and the seat adjusts itself automatically just to give you that comfort that you are looking for and obviously the passenger here also has some eight-way power settings just to make them comfortable but the question is at the back are people comfortable we have enough luggage space we're going to find out as we really take us through the rear of the Subaru Outback so in the back of the Subaru Outback, the thing that has really made me happy here is the amount of space it has. Seat in the front is set to Trevor's sitting position. He's 6'1", he's a big boy, you all know that. Look at how much space I have over here. And there's so much more space for the stuff that you have. Because over here we have um, what I would call airline style seat backs. There's loads of space all over the cabin over here. They actually have cup holders in the side of the doors over here as well as in the middle here. Enough for you to uh, keep the kids busy. Talking about the kids, we actually have isofix uh, anchor points over here for the for if you have a baby seat, for instance. And there is AC at the back here and two 5 volt USB chargers to make sure that all their devices are fine. Let's check out the boot seat, just how much more space the Outback has to offer. <laughs> so don't worry, I'm not in any trouble. But as you can see, there is so much space in the back here. The Outback actually has a larger boot capacity than a Volkswagen Touareg. Come inside and let me show you some of the stuff we have here. We actually have a space saver spare tire, but a massive amount of space. You can pull down each of the seats using the handles over here. And over here we have the subwoofer for that Harman Kardon surround sound system that Trevor loves so much. So there's enough space here for all the stuff that you need and most of the stuff that you could possibly want. So let's take this on the road and see how the Outback handles. So guys, 
day we are at the Ford Faction Civils in South Africa, trying to see how the Raptor is built and the Ford Ranger. It's an honor to be here. We're going to take you step by step on how this thing is built from assembly to welding to fitting of the seats, you know, and then doing the test like the quick send rattle and of course the final part that will head out to Durban and straight to Nairobi to the CMC showroom. That and much more only on Kazu Big Boy Trev. Myself and Mary will take you a tour of this particular facility and show you how this thing is built from start to finish. Stay tuned. So guys, here's a sneak peek at how this facility works. You do have two types of vehicles being assembled here. You have the Everest and the Ford Ranger Raptor. Two variants, but you can have the Ranger as the main variant. Now here, you do have an output of about three vehicles per, uh, per day because of demand. And of course, sometimes you can have an output of 20, 30, depending on how many vehicles are demanded in Sub-Sahara, Australia, or in Asia, or whatever it is that these vehicles are being shipped to. Now that is very important because we can tell you that this particular facility has been enhanced to build the T6 platform. Remember the T6 platform is the same platform that is on the Ranger Raptor and of course the Everest. So we're quite excited to give you this sneak peek. But now we need to go to the Ranger and see how it is built. So as you can see guys right here is where the human machine interface works. Now it allows somebody to count the number of uh, spot welds that are needed to glue up the particular uh, flow well and of course you can see the front area of the vehicle. Now if it is precise because it has either three or four or five spot welds, if you do less it will not allow the thing to detach from the metal. It's very very important. That allows you to have quality. Remember there's a line control manager who checks the quality on the number of spot rivets that are done on this particular as you can see here. As you can see this guy is doing here He's, he's actually doing that. He's spotting the welds come through, you can see here. This is a machine, human machine interface. So he's spotting the welds. And once it's done, it releases the grip from the metal and then now you're able to move to the next panel. That's amazing, guys. That is quality courtesy of Ford. Let's go on. So right here, guys, as you can see, is a group of robots scanning through the chassis of the Ford Ranger Raptor. As you can see, they are reinforcing the underbody to ensure that all the bolts and the nuts are in precise condition. In case one spot weld is missing, it is programmed to ensure that it will go back to that particular unit because it has a laser scanner to confirm that the uh, spot welds are equal in number as programmed as the machine. It will go back and redo it again so you have a good quality product. Now, these particular robots are automated. It runs 24 hours a day and there's a group of managers who normally check these robots to ensure that they are done and, and operate in the right way. This is amazing, guys. The Ford Ranger built on an automotive line. Cars of Big Trev giving you exclusive as always. So you've seen the buffer over there. Now you can see now this particular part, the cabs have been refined, the chassis has been hardened, and of course now they're putting the back plate cover. It depends if it's a, it's a single cab or the Raptor, depending on which one it is. Now as you can see here, it's welding the complete cabinet, it's taking shape. Now it actually looks like a proper Ranger. How amazing. Now we're going to go to the body marriage section and Mr. Mirigi will tell us much more about how the machines match together to form a complete Ranger. So this is the point in the station after the marriage where they're adding the doors and the hoods and the tailgate. This is the last stage before it goes into a final quality check, then into the paint shop. So this right now is the final stage of the body shop. This is just after the final buyout has been done. They're doing it called, it's called picking to paint. This is right now what in the automotive industry is called a body in white. That's before the painting has been done. So based on the sequence number of each individual vehicle, it's going to be picked up in this area and taken to the paint shop. And the paint is going to depend on the sequence number and what the customer ordered. And then like Trevor said, ship down to Durban, up to, South, up to East Africa, and you see it in the showroom in TMC in Nairobi. So what's happening on your left right now is something called the marriage. What's happening in the factory right now is that they're connecting the engine to the chassis. Ford makes the engines from scratch in their facility in Port Elizabeth. They're shipped over here. They're connected to the gearbox. It comes in over an overhead crane, and then it is brought down and married with the chassis. 
at this point, you have the, the chassis of the, of the Ford itself. It goes forward to the next stage where the body lies on the chassis. So when you hear about a car being body on frame, this is the frame, the body is going to be put on top of this. Now we've seen the Ranger now being uh, trimmed, now it's properly done. When it comes to this particular section here, they do wheel alignment. They use state-of-the-art laser technology to ensure that the Ranger came back, caster adjustment is just perfect. So that when you're driving the Ranger on Thika Road or Mombasa Road, you feel right at home because you feel stable and it is quite, quite comfortable. Now, after that, we now move to the next segment, now where it's done on the dynamic rolling chassis, where they check all the components, if the vehicle can reach the top speed and if needs adjustment, it is done therefore accordingly. So that is very important on this process. Now, after this particular segment, we go to the water test where they check the seals, the effectiveness of the seals. So they've got to put it on a shower. So water is placed on the car. It simulates a rainy condition. So there'll be a lot of water going into the car. And then after that, the inspectors will now come out and check if there's any water getting into the engine compartment, the cabin, and of course, the different places within the car. So that is very important. So we're going to see that and then now head out to the Ratsis Creek, which is basically the last section, just to confirm that the vehicle is fantastic for Nairobi. So guys, you've just seen how these vehicles have been tested on the, the Rumble Strips, and now we can confirm that this particular car has passed the quality control check and ready to be shipped all the way to Durban, onto a ship all the way to Mombasa, Kenya, on a carrier all the way to CMC Motors in Nairobi on the showroom. And you're gonna see the 2019 Ford Ranger Wild Track ready for you. Either the Ranger or the Wild Track, they all build on the same line, but it's been an honor and a good experience at the Ford Silverton plant where we're able to see how these cars are built from scratch. Quality is very key and very important. And cars a big boy trap, we'd like to thank Ford Motor Corporation South Africa for giving us this opportunity to see how these cars are built from start to finish. Done with the subtle features of the Subaru Outback. Now it's time to talk about the power. People are always asking me what kind of power does the Outback have. Now, this particular version, you can actually get the Outback on two derivatives. You can actually have the 3.6R, which is a six cylinder, which does close to 240 horsepower. Or this, this is a 2.5 liter four cylinder 16 valve twin cam or dock as you'd call it and it produces roughly about 170 horsepower and 225 newton meters of torque now all that power is sent to the four wheels courtesy of a six-speed cvt automatic gearbox the reason why cvt is there is because of efficiency there's nothing much so it gives you a good economy run on an average about 12 kilometers to the liter on a combined cycle but this also depends on so many factors it could be the load of the car um, it depends on so many factors the driving style the techniques and you're able to achieve this because this car is very fuel efficient power is transmitted to the four wheels that is why i want us to talk symmetrical all-wheel drive now all-wheel drive is a system where power is delivered to all four wheels equally and has a center differential okay so if the wheel feels the slippage then what happens it engages and slows down the wheels that are moving faster transferring all the torque to the required wheels so that you don't have slip and that's the advantage of symmetrical all-wheel drive now paired with the lower center of gravity flat four engine gives this car unparalleled balance as you drive through any kind of surface and that's the beauty of a subaru How does it feel on the road? It's quiet. The amazing thing about the Outback is the level of noise, vibration, and harshness suppression. The things that have been dampened, the sunproof cladding on the doors, on the firewall, on the transmission tunnel, this guy is so quiet. You know, if you're driving through um, Nairobi traffic and you know you don't feel the hustle and bustle, the Outback becomes 
a quiet place for you. You relax driving this car. It's comfortable. The steering is actually very, uh, you know, it's heavy. It's, it's, it, it's got that feel. You can tell where the wheels are pointing at any given time. But if you need more power like now, the different modes, Sport Sharp Intelligent and Sport will allow you to explore the full potential of this flat four engine and still give you a good fuel economy figure of about 12.1 if you are lucky. Now in terms of safety, people are wondering. Now Subaru is synonymous with safety. One thing that I can tell you for a fact is a mix of active and passive safety features that allow you to literally enjoy the Subaru in all safety sets. How do you do that? Active features, active ABS anti-lock braking system, vehicle stability control to get you out of trouble, and of course, dove symmetrical all driving wet weather. You have enough grip to ensure that your car remains full of traction at any given surface. And if all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the eight airbags that this car has across the cabin. And of course, you do have crumples on that dissipate all the impact energy away from the passenger cell. And of course, you do have the safety belt, which is the most important thing when you're driving the Outback. So Trevor has just shown you how this handles itself on the road and we are taking it off-road because the main reason that somebody buys an Outback as opposed to a legacy station wagon is the fact that it can handle its business off the road. And so far I have to say I'm pretty impressed. This obviously has very high ground clearance and in addition to the asymmetrical all-wheel drive that Subaru is famous for, this has something called X-Mode. Now that X-Mode is a, a subset of the technology for that all-wheel drive system that is specific for all roading so it figures out what each tire is doing and gives it enough power for that situation so it's actually a very good thing to have when you're off the road the other advantage is that this is lighter than most off-roaders so it actually is very nimble getting into and out of places that are very interesting in addition to this it also in some models will have a 360 degree camera which is very important when you're doing off-roading so that you can see exactly where your tires are although you still need to walk the course just like any off-road situation x mode also has hill descent control which is also a very important part of getting up to and down some of these hills and valleys that we are presented with in this country so so far this has handled itself very well i'm not surprised it is a subaru We've tested extensively the Subaru Outback. I can tell you, it still lives to the heritage of the Subaru brand. It's tough, it's reliable, it's practical, and of course now it's premium. It's on the next level. But Mr. Murigi, who are the key rivals of this car? This is a very difficult question because this is one of the last station wagons in the market. You know station wagons used to be the biggest thing in the world at about 20% market share. Yes. Now it's gone all the way down to 2.5 because of compact SUVs. This is definitely not an, a compact SUV. Fortunately or unfortunately, yes. this doesn't have any competition. Nobody else is selling a station wagon. So the only thing that you could think of would be in terms of price. Yes. And in price, you'd have to select maybe a compact SUV. Yes. Probably something along the lines of a CX-9 because of just how much space this has. Now, how much is this particular car? This particular car comes in at 7.2 million shillings. But for the real petrol heads, the 3.6 liter is available for 8.5 million shillings. And remember, this comes with a three-year, 100,000 kilometer warranty, courtesy of Subaru Kenya. And of course, you can rely on the extensive network across the country and be able to take care of your car as soon as you buy this particular car. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on Cars the Big Boy Trev. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or queries, don't hesitate to write to us as seen on the social media handles below. We'll get back to you next week. Starting off, this is Big Boy Trev. This is Mirigi. Drive safe. And be safe.